What's going on guys, it's Bromley Empire Barbell and today I'm gonna to address a philosophical question when it comes to strength training and that's whether or not you should spend your time fixing weaknesses or just getting stronger. Now I see these types of questions come up a lot on a strongman forum with newbies. Guys that let's say haven't been training very long, they're new to things like log pressing or deadlifts or whatever and the second they get stagnant their questions are what exercise should I be doing to fix this stick point, to fix that problem, to pull more weight, to press more weight. And it brings up a really good question that I don't think people are really exposed to until they've been at this for a long time. So I'm gonna address something I think is very common with Western lifting culture. When it comes to strength sports, we very much are influenced by physique culture and bodybuilding. I mean, if we look at Olympic weightlifting, it started in the late 1800s. It was directly attached to all other sports, so it got the same treatment as all other sports as the Olympics became more popular. Powerlifting didn't start until the 60s, and it was about 20 or 25 years after bodybuilding had kind of got its foothold in American culture. So powerlifting started around 1965, and those were the developmental movements that people before that used to get bigger and stronger. So there's this kind of Americanized version of lifting that involves focusing on the workout as opposed to the entire training block, focusing on the amount of effort you're doing as opposed to really concerning yourself with how what you're doing today is gonna to bleed into next week. And I think that that is a big pitfall that a lot of people come into is they're overly focused on what's going on right now as opposed to what's going on you know, weeks down the road. So if you're focused on fixing weaknesses, that means you're fixated on what's going on right now. That I missed a lift today, therefore something must be weak on me right now that prevented me from getting what would have otherwise been a successful lift. And for most people, that's not the case. When you're new to something, there are a lot of different things that will cause you to grow. Simply getting more muscle will cause you to grow. Getting better coordination, improving your setup, building more skill, getting more work capacity, getting more kinesthetic ability. These are all things that take a lot of time. So what we miss out on is the process of growth that comes from perfect practice. Because, now think about this for a second, if most of your work is what we would call submaximal, meaning you are not pushing what you're doing to the absolute limit, those same failures wouldn't happen. To develop the type of foundation, the type of base that is going to propel you to the upper echelon of physical achievement, you need to have as much practice, as much skill, as much proficiency in those lifts as possible, which means all of your training needs to be centered around those ranges that allow you to execute perfect technique over and over and over. So if we're concerning ourselves with how development works long term, we're talking about building up a certain amount of work at a certain threshold that is somewhere below this technical ceiling. You might be able to move a heavier weight from point A to point B, but this all involves technical breakdown. So if all of our work is underneath that ceiling, and as time goes on, volume slowly increases, we weigh volume and intensity over time in a predictable way that causes you to grow, then that means the next time you go to test, that technical ceiling is raised, which means your physical capabilities along with it have also raised. So most of the training programs you're familiar with kind of abide by that. Uh, most of the linear progressions we follow, most of you know everything from you know, 531 to the Grayskull LP to Juggernaut or Cube, whatever else you like, most of those have you spending most of your time in percentages where those form breakdowns won't happen. And it just reinforces the fact most of your work with compound movements, especially competitive movements, have to be done in a range where that breakdown doesn't occur. So if you're abiding by those principles and you're still getting stronger over time, the question becomes, where does the need to fix weaknesses really come into play? Well, this is something that became very popular uh, in powerlifting. It's kind of a talking point that I miss something therefore there must be a weakness. Now that's very common when it comes to more developed, more elite lifters. If you are a very developed power lifter, if you have an 800 pound squat and you find that you are getting out of position at a certain threshold, you might find that the same variations over time, the same simple progression of volume and intensity over time is not fixing this persistent issue. But that is assuming that you are already technically proficient, that you don't have these broader issues in your game that are going to be fixed just by doing more work, just by doing more perfect practice with those submaximal repetitions. So especially looking at maximal types of training where you either engage in weekly maxes or you are routinely working up and going into 
to contest peaks or to strength phases that have you up around the 90% range pretty frequently. Those types of training protocols are going to have you pushing the envelope a little more frequently and that is going to make it very difficult to work around those weaknesses as they exist. So we're talking about two different training philosophies, two different approaches to training. So if you are in some type of training modality where you're training heavier more often and it's more apparent to you that there's this persistent issue, especially given the fact, remember, that you're already pretty technically well established, then that's where we start to think about accessory movements that are going to address those specific issues that you're having. But for most of you, for most of you that are asking those questions, that are looking for that magic bullet that's going to just jettison your lift to the next level, many of you are trying to put the cart before the horse and you're trying to fix issues that haven't even had a chance to develop yet. The just get stronger approach, it sounds overly simplistic and maybe it is, but the idea of just getting stronger means sticking to your program, doing your homework, making the prescribed jumps at appropriate intervals, and letting the program develop the strength that's going to allow you to handle more weight with said perfect technique. Any linear progression you follow is gonna start you at very low percentages. And what you're gonna find is with the frequency they prescribe, two or three times a week on the same lift, you're gonna feel more dialed in, you're gonna feel better, you're gonna get a better technical handle on that lift because of all the practice. In fact, even very, very high frequency protocols that cause a ton of fatigue. If you're looking at anything prescribed by Borishiko, if you're looking at, God forbid, if any of you have ran Smolov, these are protocols that cause a lot of fatigue and you feel beat up week to week. But as time goes on, you also feel more connected to the lift. You also feel more in control. And that's what you should be looking for if you're interested in being a technical lifter. So again, Shiko is a very good example of this. The type of progression, it's almost a form of step loading. If you look at any phase that he's prescribed, you find the same percentages. They usually go in 5% increments and you might find that the ceiling is 80%. So you might find that you have a four week block where in week one, you know, you do a couple sets at 70, set at 75, maybe you do one at 80, and then you come back down and repeat. He usually programs things in pyramids. Uh, and then you're gonna find that the number of reps you do doesn't change. The only thing that changes are the number of sets you do at each, at each threshold. So you might find you work up a little quicker. Now you're doing a couple more, and then you're dropping back. And maybe this is a lighter week, so you only do a few at 75 and drop back. And this is our big volume week where you come up and you're doing a ton and he has all kinds of different protocols where you might go back and forth you might climb up back down back up or you might stay at the same percentage and do two then seven then three or whatever there's a lot of different ways he varies this but the thing that stands out is that you are not aggressively chasing heavier percentages you are staying at this threshold and giving yourself enough time to adapt to this volume now this is just one mode of progression this is just one training style that you see but if you're looking for a consistent principle of not hitting that brick wall too soon you're going to see similarly uh, similarly indicated techniques so this was actually a big aha moment when i had the opportunity to read through his translated textbook and see that these types of modalities don't emphasize that aggressive chasing of fatigue or of maximal weights as early as possible. This is prioritizing your base, your foundation. Technique is going to be refined here. You're going to grow because of the volume. You're controlling for fatigue and you're allowing yourself to recover at appropriate intervals. And then in subsequent phases, you slowly start to climb the percentages up, but only when you're ready. Now, I'm not necessarily saying all of you need to go out and run the Shiko program, but this is just one example of how so many of you need to emphasize getting stronger by practicing the main lift, by not putting the cart before the horse, by not running before you've learned to walk. Put in your time, make yourself technically proficient. That's the only chance you're really gonna have at getting to that advanced level to begin with, okay? Um, it's always important to know why you might be failing. It's always important to be able to kind of critically think about why you missed a lift and deconstruct that but that doesn't mean that you're gonna stumble across a magic bullet that is going to absolve you from responsibility of building your base and building that groundwork. Okay, so in the future, we're gonna revisit this principle. We'll find more specific ways of programming that are gonna make sure. But for now, I highly recommend most of you follow higher volume programs, higher frequency programs, programs that emphasize due diligence with the compound movements. It's skill. It's like learning to ride a unicycle. The more you do it, the better you get. The better you get, the more you get out of your training, okay? So thanks for watching. Go ahead and leave any questions in the comment box. 
Better yet, sign up for our forum. We're closing in on a thousand members. I want it to keep growing. Start a training log, post a training video, ask a question, be controversial. There are no sacred cows there. All right, Empire Forum. Go ahead and sign up, leave your questions there. Thanks for watching guys. Until next time, this is Braun Empire Barbell. I'll see you.